Yes, hello. So let's start with this talk that is called Protecting WASM Workloads with Confidential Computing and TEs. Uh, so my name is Draško Draškovic. I'm a CEO of uh, a company from Paris that is called Abstract Machines that is doing uh, a lot of research in the domain of IoT and also confidential computing cybersecurity. And I'm uh, doing this talk together with Dushan Borodčanin, who is a CTO of a company called Ultraviolet from Belgrade, Serbia, so in Europe as well. And uh, Ultraviolet uh, is one of the key European players when it comes to confidential computing, a member of uh, Confidential Computing Consortium within Linux Foundation, and they are doing a lot of work there. Uh, so the agenda for this talk, what we want to present today, is basically how do we protect uh, a WASM-based workloads with confidential computing. And we want to look at it, especially from the aspect of AI or some more complex um, algorithms. We'll talk about also one of the solutions that uh, we are developing and adapted uh, for one EU project that I will mention. Uh, <clears throat> then we'll talk about what kind of WASM workloads we we are using uh, for our AI algorithms, and then uh, Dushan will do the demo, which I think will be very interesting. So let's uh, first do a first a very lightweight introduction into confidential computing. I'll try to go very fast through those slides. Um, so I don't know you, uh, from the audience uh, how much of you have been maybe exposed to already to confidential computing. If, there is, you know, like uh, TEs, and if you have been using it, if not so many, then then I'll spend some time in explaining the problem that uh, industry is facing, and that is practically protecting data in use. So the protecting data in transit is a solved problem. Protecting data in at rest is also, you know, we can encrypt the data on disk, but when the CPU needs to use the actual data, it needs to read it from the RAM in. Uh, in the clear text, so the data is not protected at that moment. Anybody can dump the, the RAM and get the confidential data. Uh, there are, you know, many ways to, not many, but there are, there are a few technologies developing in order to prevent this from happening in to, order to find a solution from the, for this problem. And uh, one of them, very popular, is purely cryptographic approach, a method that is called fully homomorphic encryption that's been developed from, been practically dis discovered or confirmed in 2009. So it's re relatively recent, but very challenging uh, cryptographic uh, technology. Uh, it has some drawbacks, and one of the drawbacks is that it's uh, still very inefficient for uh, considerable workloads, like for AI ML uh, algorithms. And another promising technology is called confidential computing, and it's hardware-based. So uh, this solution is uh, based on the CPU extensions that uh, now all modern vendors are providing. Intel with SGX or TDX extensions, uh, AMD with uh, SCV SMP, ARM as well with ARM uh, um, confidential computing architecture, there are implementations on RISC-V as well, uh, a Keystone and Cove, a new uh, proposal for this architecture and so on. Um, it is a promising technology in the sense that uh, the, RAM, the, the RAM between the VM, that is a confidential VM, and uh, um, I mean, with, with, between CPU and, and RAM, there is a, a cryptographic uh, process that is happening on the fly. And so basically the portion of RAM that uh, the VM is taking is always encrypted. In that sense, the, we can uh, imagine that we can do a, a centralized, let's say a machine learning where we can bring the data and the model, let's say for the inference within the trusted execution environment or that VM that, is, that has its RAM encrypted, or we can even do the decentralized, the federated machine learning and very different uh, scenarios. However, uh, you know, those TEs, typically today, they act as uh, bare metal uh, VMs. And so basically, those, uh, that means that you don't have an underlying operating system. You don't have a hardware abstraction layer. 
and this is what makes uh, things uh, difficult. Uh, in order to provide this uh, hardware abstraction layer, typically you would put uh, uh, some kind of, let's say, Linux operating system. Uh, but the problem is also that you want to keep uh, so-called trusted compute base very small. And then um, uh, the, it, it is really a question, what, what is the minimal, let's say, runtime that, that can be provided there and have a reliable polyglot applications? And this is, of course, you're recognizing a good opportunity for uh, WebAssembly. Um, so I will also tell you something about the Elastic AO project, and uh, it is a project that is looking for a solution for these kind of problems. Uh, it is a large-scale EU project uh, with, over ter with 13 organizations that are, uh, that are uh, some of them are big corporations like Ericsson or Telefonica, some of them are research institutes, uh, universities as well as, as startups. It has a reasonably big budget of uh, 5 million euros and it's a three-year research project. Uh, in this project, we are really focusing on, on researching the orchestration of WebAssembly uh, functions, so function as a service, uh, with, with the new 6G uh, telecom infrastructures. But also, we are uh, very interested in confidential computing and including the confidential computing nodes within that uh, orchestration. So, uh, as Elastic Project researches for the options or the good solutions that can uh, solve the problem of uh, enablers for the confidential computing, one that is very well established, uh, uh, but unfortunately, uh, as an open source, not in a perfect state. Uh, it is donated uh, to the Linux Foundation and it's called NRX. And NRX is really oriented uh, towards WASM uh, and running uh, WASM within uh, uh, trusted execution environments and uh, especially deploying those uh, VMs, which is uh, not trivial task to do, especially uh, when you take into account that uh, those VMs must be attested and there is a testation process that must happen, so it's hardware-based attestation, uh, so they must be properly set up and uh, uh, runtime within the, so WASM runtime within the, uh, this VM must uh, provide uh, sufficient um, capabilities uh, to run different types of uh, services to, to have a networking enabled, um, eventually a, a file system as well, and so on. Um, so NRX is one extremely interesting project that is today within Confidential Computing Consortium within Linux Foundation, and uh, uh, an object of research of Elastic Project as well. The other solution that we are uh, developing and, and researching, it's called Cocos AI, uh, it is a platform that is built by Ultraviolet and is something that Dushan will demo. Um, the Cocos AI, on the other hand, is focused more on a multi-party computation, secure multi-party computation where multiple parties do not trust each other so that you have an algorithm provider and date, potentially multiple data providers that can con uh, combine data sets and then the uh, secure enclaves or trusted execution environments look like a very good candidate uh, that can provide uh, absolute confidentiality where this data uh, exchange can happen and where uh, algorithms can be applied without actually revealing data to any of the other parties. So Cocos AI is trying to solve a bit different problem, but it nevertheless, in order to solve this problem, must provide the runtime and hardware abstraction layer. And uh, today Cocos AI is providing multiple runtimes, some uh, being a pure Python uh, interpreter that can run, of course, AI ML workloads, Docker, uh, Linux binaries, but also WASM uh, runtime through uh, WASM time or whatever, uh, other runtime uh, you pick because it's uh, built in on, on the top of the minimal Linux uh, distribution. 
So uh, I will very quickly go through this, uh, let's say, architecture of Cocos AI so that you can understand the demo itself. But uh, as I mentioned, there are multiple, typically in, a, let's say, there they can be multiple hospitals which need to exchange very confidential data and AI company that can provide the algorithm. And so then the confidential VM or the uh, trusted execution environment uh, can be a, a place in which they can uh, upload the data and the algorithm, the algorithm can be executed and only the result, uh, let's say the inference result or the model after the training uh, can be returned to uh, whoever is the designated to be a result consumer. Uh, in order to achieve this, uh, we need to have some kind of uh, way to spin up the trusted execution environment uh, because it is, a, in the essence, a virtual machine. Uh, there, there needs to be some kind of uh, VM uh, manager, right? But the one that is capable of uh, spinning that certain type of virtual machine that is confidential virtual machine. Uh, within the confidential virtual machine now, because it's really a sealed box where nobody cannot access to it, uh, but can only upload the data eventually through the TLS connection, we need to have uh, not only the hardware abstraction layer, but we need also to have some kind of agent that would uh, coordinate this uh, multi-party, secure multi-party execution and accept different workloads, uh, sorry, different data sets and the algorithms and, and kind of have a state machine so that it can start uh, the executions once uh, all the different, let's say, hospitals upload the, their data sets. So, um, the, 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 I quickly mentioned, you know, the, the manager itself, so it, uh, it is, uh, you need to build some logic into it so that it knows which kind of uh, uh, secure virtual machines to deploy. Uh, and then this is architecture dependent because you can have uh, AMD which has a CVSMP technology or Intel that has TDX and so on. So manager is also capable of abstracting different architectures. Uh, the agent, as I mentioned, is there to uh, serve as some kind of coordinator so that you can uh, upload different data sets and, and the algorithm, of course, and then uh, be capable to start the execution. But one of the key topics of the confidential computing is uh, so-called remote attestations. So remote attestations are done by hardware. Uh, they are, the measurements are done by, by, uh, by the trusted execution environment or by the CPU extension itself. And then uh, the measurement of uh, the whole, let's say boot process uh, of the VM is provided as an attestation report or a measurement to the uh, verifier who can then contact uh, the, the different types of endorsers depending on the architecture and the vendor that is providing uh, the verification of the measurement and then really be sure that there is uh, a, a, this type of VM, a confidential VM that is running only this type of uh, uh, a software system within the enclave and then that we can be assured that we are ready to upload the data or to upload the algorithm only after the attestation is done and verified. So the agent that I mentioned must also have and has logic of doing those remote attestations and in the particular case of uh, Cocos AI, the attestation is built into the process of establishing the TLS connection, so within a TLS handshake and uh, is standardized by ETF uh, uh, so-called RATS group, remote attestation uh, groups for the standardization of this, uh, of this technology and uh, it's, it's something that is called attested TLS. So it's very new uh, standard that is still in development. So as I mentioned, there are multiple uh, support uh, for different workloads, uh, but uh, we will focus today on WASM and in order for us to you know, test and, and uh, make a proof of concept and, and develop further, we needed to find some good library on the top of which we will uh, build those algorithms in Rust. And one of the best we found out there is called Burn AI. 
and uh, it is some it is somewhat comparable to PyTorch or or, or other uh, you know interesting libraries. Uh, it supports both CPU and GPU. So GPU support is interesting from the perspective of confidential computing because uh, in itself now GPUs have the very similar problem is that the calculations done in the GPUs themselves must be also <laughs> done in an encrypted portion of RAM. So you, they need to have the same capabilities. Only few GPUs on the market have these capabilities today. One of them is very hard to get. Um, so uh, it's, it's very difficult to develop further and, and to test uh, uh, these, these capabilities. But basically, um, we use this library. And then uh, you will find a lot of examples uh, that are built with this in order to test the, the confidential computing in the uh, ultraviolet uh, repo. And there are, um, there are blog posts that, 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 are, that have been published that will explain basically what you are seeing in the demo. And now it's demo time and Dushan will uh, show you how this all works with the confidential VMs. Thank you, Drashko. Okay, so uh, first, um, what we have here is, uh, uh, I will show you the NIST uh, data set, optical, optical character recognition. I know it's not so uh, inspiring example of uh, uh, the machine learning, but uh, it's very good for the demo. So what we did, we used this uh, burn library to uh, train the model. I will not train the model now. This is just how, how it looks like. I have already uh, prepared the model. And then uh, we have built, uh, uh, we have, uh, we have built uh, the uh, inference version of it. Uh, so what I did here is uh, I actually prepared a WASM um, version of uh, uh, WASM, uh, WASM binary that will uh, do the inference uh, using this model that has been trained using Burn uh, library. Uh, I have also prepared the, the, the data, so we will be doing, uh, doing it on this particular, particular image. So this is number four. And uh, I need to prepare also, uh, I have prepared that uh, particular uh, uh, test data so that it, uh, it is practically converted to a, a, a byte array, nothing, nothing spectacular. And it, will, it is just as suitable for the, as the input for, uh, for, this, uh, um, for this demo, so uh, for this uh, uh, algorithm. So this is, uh, this is the, what we call Prism AI, which is uh, practically uh, cloud services built around Cocos, Cocos AI, uh, that provides some additional, some additional functionalities. Um, I will now create first asset, and assets are actually two things. It's uh, either um, it's either algorithm or a data set. And since we are working with uh, with the uh, Wasm uh, binary, Wasm algorithm, I I create an algorithm. This is uh, yeah, just uh, uh, the file name is actually important because. Uh, that will be the file that uh, our agent mentioned in the in the previous slides that the Drashko mentioned that is running inside TE and is practically controlling what's happening in the inside trust the execution environment or rather in a, in this uh, operating system that we have created in Linux minimal Linux distribution that we are using um, uh, will execute so the file name is also important and then there is a checksum that I need to calculate. So the checksum is used to uh, verify to verify if the the actual uploaded uh, uploaded algorithm is a uh, valid one. So now I have created the asset and I need to create the uh, computation next. Okay. Let's try again. This happens in live demos. Okay, I have created the asset. I have actually two, but uh, uh, either either one will work because for as long as the checksum is valid, uh, it it should be uh, should be good. So now I'll create a new computation. Computation is actually a specification of the workload that will happen in, inside the 
Um, so this is just the, the metadata that are related to the workload we are going to, to provide. So I will create, uh, let's see, large cup demo. Uh, we will not have any data set providers because this will be only protecting the WASM workload, so uh, we don't need any data sets. In general, this is a collaborative platform so that uh, you, can, uh, you can have different data set and algorithm providers and even result consumers, and those different parties will come together um, and uh, provide their relevant, uh, their relevant materials in, in order to, to have the computation uh, to, to create a final result, and then the result consumer or consumers will be able to, uh, to fetch those results, which usually, usually are either results of the, um, uh, which we'll have here, results of the inference or results of the, of the training, really, the model. So I will be the algorithm provider. And I will be result consumer. Now we get to choose the backend. Backend is, backend is uh, actually the physical machine with trusted execution environments enabled and our management component running in. This is the real physical machine in our private data center that has, um, that has this setup. And uh, uh, yeah, so I have created the computation. Now I will have to, uh, have to link, let me just double check which one. This will work. I have to link to, associate practically the um, created, uh, created algorithm to the uh, computation. Uh, you can see here that I need to provide my public key. So first, in order to uh, later access uh, the, the agent that is running inside trusted execution environment, I need to uh, upload my public key in order to establish mutual TLS uh, with, uh, with the server, agent server that is running in, uh, in uh, TE, and I can do that by creating keys with our CLI tool, and then I will need to upload them. Well, to upload public key. And once, once that's done, um, my computation will be ready, uh, ready to run. So uh, when I click on the run, what will happen is uh, the, our cloud components that you, you are seeing here uh, will start uh, will communicate to this manager component and upload the manifest, the computation manifest that will, uh, that will, uh, uh, that has uh, this uh, algorithm in it and also has the, uh, my public key so that I can establish the connection to it and has me as a result consumer and algorithm provider so that I can upload the, upload the algorithm and also later receive the, receive the results. And uh, when uploading the algorithm, I will need to specify that the algorithm is actually WASM. So because we have a different, different time, run times, you get to specify which algorithm. Um, you get to specify your private, uh, private key because of the, to establish the connection. And uh, you get to, to specify the data that you are sending as the arguments. So you can see here that we are uploading algorithm that is uh, this one, inference NIST. Then uh, we have this private key that, that I have just generated. It is a WASM workload and uh, uh, this, this is now uploading the algorithm. Virtual machine is provisioned. We are already, because this is a very quick inference, um, the, re the results are already uh, prepared and I will now consume results. And once results are consumed, we have this agent is a, a state machine, so it says that computation is complete because there is only one result consumer me, and I have already consumed a result. So now I can stop the computation. Uh, bear in mind that stopping computation actually kills the virtual machine and uh, removes, because virtual machine in virtual machine everything is, uh, we have a file system, but it is uh, in RAM file system, and since RAM is encrypted, everything that's happening inside is encrypted. And also since we have this mutual TLS uh, and this policy that is uh, bound to uh, computation manifest uh, we have safely and only I could uh, could actually upload the, the data set and only I could consume, uh, not the data set, but the algorithm and only I could res uh, consume results because I was the only, only one who uploaded my uh, public key. And then I can unzip results and I can, and we can see that it is 
indeed number four. So this is the, the result of the evaluation here. So yeah, this is, this is the, the demo. And now we will go through uh, next steps related to co both Cocos AI, but uh, also the whole problem of uh, running uh, uh, WASM runtimes inside Trust Execution Environments. Yes, so thanks, uh, Dusan, for this uh, demo. Uh, the, the future work of the project, of the Elastic project and the research that we are doing is uh, really looking forward to enabling more the anarchs and especially the microkernel that is actually sitting below the syscalls uh, and uh, uh, actually doing a proxy of those syscalls between WASM runtime and the uh, Linux operating system. Then uh, we want also to research other uh, potentially unikernel approach uh, with some other unikernels like Hermitcore or using Unicraft to build a, a Linux unikernels or even inspecting SCL4 uh, microkernels. Uh, the Elastic project uh, also uh, researches the orchestration over IoT devices. So Zephyr RTOS is uh, also a potential hardware abstraction layer there. It can run uh, at least Wammer or or some other uh, uh, WASM runtime. Then the orchestrator is a really um, big question, big uh, research topic, because we need now not only the orchestrator that can uh, orchestrate the WASM workloads over standard nodes, but we need to take into account the uh, trusted execution environments, and they, as you saw, uh, demand the attestation. Uh, so the attestation procedure uh, gets into the uh, problem of the orchestration. So the orchestration must be built in that way. And uh, finally, you know, maybe we can uh, reuse the work done uh, within CNCF on the confidential containers and use WASM instead of uh, uh, Docker uh, over there. Uh, and finally, as I mentioned, uh, RISC V is very interesting uh, architecture to us, especially when it comes to the IoT space and we want to work on uh, supporting this uh, better and especially you know, running uh, uh, confidential computing and uh, WASM uh, inside the uh, confidential uh, uh, enclaves on the RISC-V. Uh, and this concludes the talk uh, that we had, so we, are, we can take a few questions if there, are, there is still some time. Thanks. Thank you. There are no questions, then I guess it's uh, end of the talk. <laughs> yes, since maybe, maybe just to mention, since we didn't see it in the demo, but uh, uh, very relevant and very important part here uh, are these mentioned attestations. And uh, each time you need, you establish the, the connection with uh, trusted execution environment, actually what happens is uh, alongside with this uh, mutual TLS that is like a standard, um, we do also this attestation. Remote attestation includes uh, many steps and uh, it's a, a topic in itself, so we'll not get into details, but uh, it is practically the verification that the given um, given software is running on the given given hardware, and you can trust it. And uh, uh, there comes to play this uh, this uh, particular um, our Dell machine, our private private instance. So you need to have the hardware that enable that uh, supports trusted execution environments in such a way that you can do these attestations. Now, currently, there are only only well, the most popular is this uh, uh, MD SVSMP, but there is also the Intel TDX, and hopefully there will be more and also hopefully there will be more on the consumer grade. This is all, all server grade uh, CPUs. Um, and when it comes to running specific WASM runtimes, it's very simple and easy to, 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 to change WASM runtime um, in our, or what we call hardware abstraction layer in our uh, Linux distribution. Currently, uh, we are running, I think, WASM Edge, but it can be uh, any. Um, so yeah, that's, that's also very, very important uh, part.
particularly related to TEEs and running workloads in TEEs. I just wanted to add that because we have time. Great. Thanks, then. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.